Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ihanzu Symposium of 2024, held online and at the University of Bielefeld. So once again, as in past years, this is an opportunity for us to get together and celebrate the Ihanzu language, as well as to share what we learned in our research during the course. Uh, so for those of us who are encountering Ihanzu for the first time today, Ihanzu, often called Isanzu, spoken by around 26,000 people and uh, spoken in north central Tanzania. We can see it highlighted in red here on this map. If you're interested in learning a bit more about the cultural and historical contexts of Ihanzu, I encourage you to follow the QR code on screen to a short introduction to the language I prepared as part of this course. Um, my research with the Ihanzu speech community began in late 2016 with cursory fieldwork conducted with Mr. Onesmo Kidadi in Singida town. In 2018, I followed this up with some more extensive work in and around Ibaga town in Mkalama district. With generous funding from the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, I spent a year analyzing these Ihanzu recordings at the Tokyo University of Foreign Studies under the supervision of Professor Daisuke Shinagawa. And from 2019 to 2021, I helped facilitate a period of Ihanzu language documentation undertaken primarily by local researchers, Sarah Kaleel and Samueli Isia, who collected nearly 300 hours of audiovisual material, including songs, stories, procedural explanations, as well as life histories, such as this account of rainmaking rituals contributed by Rahima Rajabu. Um, a still of which is represented on screen here. Uh, around this time, I was invited by Professor Andras Baranyi and uh, uh, Professor Jutta Hartmann to convene a course on field methods at Bielefeld University, uh, with Ihanzu being our language of investigation. And today is, in fact, the fourth Ihanzu symposium to take place since 2021. And uh, last year's symposium, as well as the one before it, can also be viewed online in recorded form. The Field Methods course was held in a crash course format. So over the course of roughly a month, participants met three times a week and engaged in some formal lessons, such as an introduction to Ihanzu, different data collection methods, as well as the software programs Elon and Flex. Most of their time, however, was spent working with a speaker of the Ihanzu language. Uh, and unlike a traditional field methods course, however, our course participants were located in Germany, where our, whereas our Ihanzu speaker and I were located in Tanzania. So all meetings were conducted using the internet video telephony software Zoom. Uh, and data collection uh, sessions were recorded on the Tanzanian side using the Zoom H5 recording device and then sent to participants for close listening and re-listening at the end of each day. Uh, unlike last year, where initial data collection sessions were collected in the Ihanzu community Ibaga, and uh, which moved to High Dome due to poor internet connection, all data collection sessions were held this year in High Dome where a good connection allowed us to conduct relatively clear video calls, maximizing participant interaction and allowing observation of gesture and other nonverbal cues. And this is a photo of our classroom uh, towards the end of our data uh, collection sessions. Um, as in past years, a massive thanks goes out to Nicholas Nalingi Guagidion, who contributed as our Ihanzu language consultant during the course. And so Nico's fluency in Ihanzu and English allowed our course participants to work in English, which is not something that many other Ihanzu speakers could accommodate. So also his willingness to travel and stay in High Dome for many days, as well as his ability to identify small and important nuances of pronunciation and meaning were really sort of key to our success and uh, as they were in the successes of past years, as Nico has been the primary language consultant for most of our uh, iterations of this uh, field methods course. So big thanks uh, to Nico. Here is today's program. So we begin with me giving a, a short introduction. Uh, then it's uh, Peter Viba giving a, a talk on passive constructions in Ihanzu and uh, Raul Schubert will uh, follow with 
a first look at requests and refusals in Ihanzu. So talks are approximately 10 to 15 minutes in length with around 10 to 15 minutes for questions at the end. We can, of course, hang around a little bit afterwards for some general discussion if we'd like. Um, finally, I should make clear that participants in today's symposium have been working with the Hanzu language for approximately six weeks now. So as such, all transcriptions, translations, and analyses should be seen as preliminary. What we're about to engage in is a series of diverse approaches to complex language data and novel findings which can inform how we proceed in our understanding of the Ihanzu language. And though preliminary, all of this research is real and relevant. And for this, I would like to say, say thank you to both Peter and Raul for conducting their work as such. I really thank you for all the effort you've put into it. And I very much look forward to hearing uh, what you have to say and sharing this afternoon with our colleagues. So um, without any further uh, delay or adieu, uh, I would like to uh, get on with it and uh, go to our next presentation. So thank you all for being here and uh, let's uh, quickly move on to our uh, presentation number one.